Are the stars real things? When you look up at the night sky, you see the stars, pinpoints of light, infinitely small. Even with a large telescope, a star would never appear to you to be anything more than a perfect pinpoint. The stars never appear to move, never appear to change. No wonder that people used to think that the stars were not material things, but some kind of magical objects, pure and perfect, unblemished by the corrupt and disorderly Earth. Astrology teaches that the stars are not real things. In astrology, the stars and planets are signifiers of events and of our fates. The stars have no independent existence according to astrology, and the movement of the planets are more like the motion of the hands on some celestial cuckoo clock, setting the schedule for the minutia of our daily lives. One of the first people to speculate that the stars were actually real objects lived 2,500 years ago his name was Anaxagoras, a philosopher in ancient Greece. The heavenly bodies, he claimed, were masses of stone torn from the earth and ignited by rapid rotation. He explained that even though both the sun and the stars were fiery stones, we don't feel their heat because of their enormous distance from us. All things considered, not a terrible guess. Nonetheless, the stars may be forever out of reach. They are so far away that no human may ever be able to travel to a star and scoop out a sample. The first philosopher of science and the founder of positivism, Auguste Comte, famously said that we can never know the composition of the stars. But today, we do know that the stars are real things, and we know precisely what they are made of. And the way we know is thanks entirely to rainbows. There really is a straight line between rainbows and the composition of the stars. We can figure out what the stars are made of by dissecting a rainbow, one that is made of starlight. But to do that, we first have to know what a rainbow is. Let's first ask why rainbows are shaped the way they are. Why do they have that hemispherical shape? They don't actually. Rainbows are circles, or they would be if the ground didn't get in the way. From the angle we usually see rainbows, the horizon cuts off our view, and we see only half of them. Under rare circumstances, when the weather is just right, and you're observing from high off the ground, you can see the entirety of the circle. A rainbow is reflected sunlight. The sunlight strikes a cloud of water droplets suspended in the air, and is reflected back at you. So why the colors? If this is a reflection, why don't you see a reflected sun? as you would on the surface of a lake. The colors are the result of the light being refracted. This is the same phenomenon you see when you stick a straw in a glass of water. Light is bent and no longer travels in straight lines. This is the part that takes us a step closer to figuring out what stars are made of. The refraction of light is key. Sunlight, as you may know, is a mixture of all visible colors. But sunlight looks white to your eye because all the colors arrive at your eye at the same time. Refraction splits white light into millions of different hues. It works like this. Here's a tiny raindrop suspended in the air. If refraction didn't happen, the sunlight would enter the droplet and bounce back out again, with the inside of the droplet acting like a tiny concave mirror. But at the walls of the droplet, something more happens. Right where the water meets the air, the light changes direction. And then on the way out, the light changes direction again. And here's the crux. Light of different colors will bend by different amounts. When the refracted white light exits the droplet, the different colors contained within it will be moving in different directions. Now let's scale up. This is happening simultaneously in millions of water droplets, each of which are positioned at a different angle with respect to the sun and your eyes. Which colors you see coming from each droplet depends on where you are standing in relation to them. Different parts of the cloud of droplets will reflect different colors back to you. This means that no two people ever see the same rainbow. So how does this tell us what stars are made of? Well, sunlight is not the only kind of light you can use to make a rainbow and you don't need to wait for the sun to come out after a rainy day to see one. 
you can make a rainbow yourself with a glass prism. But the interesting and weird part is what happens when you make rainbows from other kinds of light sources. Suppose you use a fluorescent light bulb as a light source, and then you send the light from this bulb through a glass prism to make the rainbow. Now light bulbs are not nearly as bright as sunlight, so the resulting rainbow will be pretty dim. You'd need a dark room, or maybe you might even need a camera taking a picture of the rainbow with a long exposure to see it clearly. But either way, the result is just wacky. Look at this. There are colors missing from the rainbow. Are they being blocked somehow? No, the colors are just absent. The fluorescent bulb generates some colors, but not all of them. What about other sources of light? What about neon lights? It's even more dramatic. Neon lights generate only a small fraction of the colors in the rainbow. This effect was actually discovered almost 200 years ago. While they didn't have light bulbs to work with back then, they generated these patterns of light by burning different substances and examining the light from the flame. And a lot of people worked for decades to figure out what it all meant. A German optician named Josef von Fraunhofer figured out that a grating made of very narrow slits worked even better than a glass prism to generate a sharp rainbow image. The process of examining the light from burning chemicals was greatly improved by two German scientists, a physicist named Gustav Kirchhoff and a chemist named Robert Bunsen. They invented a source of heat that didn't interfere with the colors they were studying. That heat source was called the Bunsen burner. And so what was the result of all this work? The result was a set of fingerprints for chemical elements. In the 1860s, Kirchhoff and Bunsen published a list of careful observations of the patterns of light from different burning chemicals. There was no question. You could tell what something was made of, as long as it was hot and glowing, simply by examining the unique patterns of bright lines it generated. Each chemical element has a unique set of lines. And so, we now have a way to answer the question we asked at the beginning. What is the chemical composition of the stars? Fraunhofer was the first person to examine sunlight this way. And don't forget that the sun is also a star, the easiest star for us to examine. This image is what Fraunhofer saw. This is a rainbow of sunlight, but generated with instrumentation that makes the image more sharp and precise. All the colors are there, except for a few. There are dark lines in this image where some colors are absent. Today, these lines are called Fraunhofer lines. Let's clean up this image a little further, so the dark lines are clearer. So, what are they? It was Anders Jonas Angström from Sweden who first figured it out. Here's the pattern of glowing lines generated by the element hydrogen. They match perfectly with some of the dark lines found in sunlight. And here's sodium, again a match. And the same with iron and magnesium. Angström realized that when white light passes through a cloud of some element, certain specific colors are absorbed from the white light. And the same element emits exactly the same colors when it is glowing hot. Elements leave their fingerprints in sunlight and in starlight. So, the sun, our local star, contains mostly hydrogen and helium, but also oxygen, carbon, iron, nitrogen, magnesium, and many other elements in trace amounts. Different stars have different combinations of elements, and every element found in the stars is also found on Earth. These scientists have told us something remarkable about the universe and about ourselves. The Earth and the universe are not separate entities. This was a burning question back in the 19th century. Are the heavens made of matter or something ethereal? Are the stars real things? Yes, they are, and they are made of the same kind of matter, the same chemical elements that the Earth and humans are made of. We and the stars are made of the same stuff, and we know this thanks to the study of rainbows. <laughs>